Welcome to J is for Justice podcast. If live breaking news and following true crime is your thing, then please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you like what you see in my videos, please consider giving them a thumbs up. Good evening. Welcome to J is for Justice at night. Welcome, everyone. It's good to see you guys all in chat. I have missed all of you. I, I don't go live for a day and I'm like Jones in to talk to you guys. So that's why I planned this live tonight. Welcome. Welcome. I see a lot of mods are here. It's a good night for the moderators to all be here. That doesn't happen too often. Carrie has been a member for 17 months. Hello, beautiful Jay. So happy to be here for another month. Same, same. I, I, I'm happy you're here. I'm happy all of you are here. And before we begin, I just want to share something that just happened because I'm still kind of shook over it. So I was going through my emails and I found an old email. I was searching up like Idaho 4 or something. I can't remember what my search term was in the email. But I came across an email from a guy named Daniel that was a viewer. And he wrote me about a theory he had on the Idaho 4. And it was a long time ago, guys. He wrote me back in <clears throat> November, and we went back and forth a couple of times in email. And I wrote him back because I came across the email, and I was just like, hey, did your um, theory change on the Idaho 4? And I got an email back from one of his family members, and unfortunately, he's passed away. He had cancer. And it just kind of hit me, like, wow, like all the people I don't even know that could be watching that are sick or going through struggles and aren't even on this earth anymore. And it just kind of hit me, man. It really kind of hit me. So rest in peace, Daniel. It's so sad. Um, so yeah, moving on to this manhunt. This is, this is bananas. You guys, this is absolutely bananas. But everybody welcome to chat. If you haven't hit that like button, go ahead and smash it now. We're going to start off with an article on this. And that is him up there. And there, it's weird because in some of these pictures, dude, he looks fat, but he's not. He's not fat. It must be like the camera angle or something because he's definitely not fat. <laughs> but some of these pictures can be deceiving that I found. So if you look at the thumbnail, he looks big. He looks big. All right, so it says a convicted ch child offender who police said should be considered dangerous escaped from a St. Louis County, Missouri hospital. And I saw that John Gone Girl is from there. So John Gone Girl, keep your eye out because this guy is Gone Girl and it's not good because he's dangerous. It's it's very, he's very dangerous. Thank you for being a birder for 20 months, Lucia. I love ya. I love you guys too, Jams. All right. So Tommy Wayne Boyd, 45 years old, a prisoner at Potosi Correctional Facility, was last seen around 3.45 a.m. Thursday. So just 3.45 in the morning, a little over like, what, 16, 17 hours ago. And he's got his eyes open. Be very safe. Be very safe. Um, so he was reported, but get this, they weren't alerted until 430 in the morning. So officers from the Afton Southwest Precinct were alerted around 430 a.m. that he had fled the building. Boyd was being guarded by two Missouri Department of Correction officers when he escaped. A hospital spokesperson said. There was no physical confrontation, no one hurt, no one was hurt, and video surveillance shows the escapee leaving the hospital. While there is no evidence, he is still on the hospital campus. To ensure the safety of everyone, we are conducting a complete search of all our buildings. Doug Walls, so am I. Don't worry about it. So this is, this is Tommy Wayne Boyd. And I agree, Carrie. It's very scary. 
And I don't know why we're hearing it. We have another guy that's on the run right now in Indianapolis. And we're going to get to that, too. He was accidentally released from jail. How are you accidentally released? Yeah, this dude just walked out. Two guards were supposed to be watching his ass. So what are we thinking here? Was this planned? Did, I mean, are we hiring correctional officers that plan to do this kind of shiz? I don't understand. 3.45 in the morning, he just walked out. Not handcuffed or anything. Police said he was traveling in an unknown direction. So they have no idea where this guy did or where this guy went. Wait till you hear what he did. He should be considered dangerous. It is unknown if he is harmed. We have a press conference too. Anyone seeing Boyd should immediately call 911. Boyd is serving a 30-year sentence for statutory sodomy. Now we're going to go look at his rap sheet here. He was transported to the hospital on Wednesday for treatment. So he went to the hospital Wednesday. <clears throat> he walks out on Thursday. I mean, what? So if you go over here to the Missouri State Highway Patrol website, and let's make this widescreen. You see this loser. And God, I hope he's caught fast because this scares the hell out of me because this guy has a victim. This guy has a victim who was 11 when he sodomized her. 11. So here's his rap sheet. It says Tommy Wayne Boyd, date of birth 10 1977. This is the shit bag right here. He is sodomy first degree, Green County. It happened on 10 13, 1996. He's a tier level three. Let's see what a tier level three is. Tier one offenders. Wait, tier three offenders have a lifetime registration requirement and shall report to the CLEO in person every 90 days. Tier three offenders are not eligible to file petition for removal from the sex offender registry unless the requirement to register results from an adjudic. Oh my God, I can never say that word. Delinquent juvenile education and the clean record removal is met. So. In other words, this dude is a complete scumbag of the highest degree. And he was in the hospital over, he, he went there Wednesday. Yes, he hurt her in very terrible ways. He got 30 years in prison. In prison. So now we go back. I know, Ruma, it's nasty. It's horrible. So let's see where he's incarcerated or was incarcerated. Let's see who was responsible. Hold on, it's opening up. It's taking me to Vine Link. I know, that's a huge what? What? And don't even get me started on Coburger. What's this dude's name? Boyd. What's his first name? Tommy? His name is actually Tommy, like it's not Thomas. Tommy Boyd. I'm not a robot. I'm not a robot. I'm gonna prove it. I'm gonna prove it. Shall we play a game? You live two hours from there, Michelle? I hope they catch him too. It was an 11-year-old boy, 116. I mean, not that it's okay if it's any, but geez, oh, Pete's. All right, here he is, Tommy Boyd. 
um, Northeast Cor- Northeast Correctional Center. Let's look at that. Northeast Correctional Center. Oh, my God, Jammers, you're kidding. Potosi is like southeast Missouri. Okay, we're going to look at the map right now, Gone Girl. There is Northeast Correctional Center. And they don't know what direction. Well, it was the hospital, though, that he left from. So where's the address of the hospital? Let's go watch the press conference. Let's watch these videos, and then we'll try to get some more information. Let's start. I believe this is the first one. Oh, my God, I can't watch it. I don't have. I'm going to have to sign up for an Instagram I thought I could at least watch them. That's why I never use Instagram because I can't log in. But look, I'm logged in. I'm totally logged in. I haven't been in this account in years. Okay, so let's get back to our link. Wow, that was that was nice. That actually worked. Don't start barking, Bella. All right, here we go. Now that I'm all logged in. Local and federal partners to make sure that we apprehend the suspect. Uh, At this point, we have our flight operations. We have our special response unit, our canine units, uh, along with units from the State Highway Patrol. At this point, we're investigating. Uh, we're pulling camera data, camera footage, and uh, several other investigative techniques. And right now, is there any questions? Uh, Do we happen to know how he was able to walk out of a hospital when he should have been in custody? Well, right now, that's under investigation with the Department of Corrections. Oh my God! This is oh, this is horrible. This is horrible. I'm not even laughing about it. Do we know how we got loose when he was supposed to be in custody? That's a question for the Department of Corrections. What? The county sheriff doesn't know? Grady Judd would never, ever do a press conference and be like, I don't know how it happened. And they'll speak on that at a later date. At a later date? Was he in? Do you have guards around him? Do we know anything about that at all? Because yes. the, the DOC is pushing us off to you guys. Uh, you well, know. the Department of Corrections is investigating that at this point, and they'll get back with you at a later date. Is there a danger in the community? Wait, hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right there. That's weird. Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. <laughs> this doesn't even make any sense. So the reporter said, well, the DOC is Department of Corrections is pushing it off on you guys. He says, oh, well, they're, they'll, they'll, they're investigating. They'll get back with you at a later time. Ooh, excuse me? Are you not public servants? I heard a Guardo with like a G. Grady Judd would never, ever. Hey, Punani. My niggas wife me once they get that good Punani. What I would say is the suspect is a dangerous person, but we brought in the resources needed that if anybody sees this suspect, call 911, let us know his location, but do not approach the suspect. But I want you to know that we have brought in all the resources needed to respond immediately and effectively. How far is your research area right now? Um, that's an operational standpoint. I can't speak to that. Uh, he was in the... Uh... Oh, he's... <laughs> she says... Wow, isn't it crazy watching all these different police departments and how they handle things so different? So her question was, how far is your search area? He said that that's operational. None of your beeswax. Um, excuse me. If I lived there, 
You better damn well tell me if that motherfucker could be in my neighborhood. Operational my ass. that we can find in the area, we're pulling that data. Have you guys access for that? Did you see him anywhere? Not at this time. There are no sightings at this point. Not off this hospital. Though. Not at this point. Have any reason to he's still wearing those clothes that he left with when we saw him? Unknown. And he was wearing shorts, right? Correct. Hospital slippers? Yes. Got a black coat. Do you think he was here for an injury or do you think this was a plan escape? The Department of Corrections can answer that at a later time. But it was a medical treatment. Correct. It's kind of hard to tell on there. There are those slippers with gray shorts and like a black jacket. Yeah. That's, what's kind of That's the best photo we have too at this time. Okay. Uh, I do not. The Department of Corrections has all that information. Well, where are they? Time starts to go by. I mean, obviously, those are critical moments, early hours of this. Uh, it, sound, it seems like the mind says you're throwing everything at it you possibly can. Can you speak to your approach so is that a joint? at this point? Oh, sure. I, I will assure you that we have the capacity about? with our federal, state, and local partners to continue this effort and so is that indefinitely. Lieutenant, we saw uh, so is that a law enforcement officers Thank you guys. In the lot looking in windows. We saw law enforcement officers in vehicles down on First Road talking to residents. Could you characterize for us what was going on there? That's part of our investigative practices and at this point. All right, do you guys have any other questions regarding the search? Can you give me the same number in terms of agencies and people that are involved? Um, so what I would say is that we have numerous amount of police officers and detectives from St. Louis County. The State Highway Patrol has brought in an enormous amount of resources as well, and the Department of Correction is the system and the United States Marshals. And you're in the ground and in the air, I assume? Correct. Any other message that you want to give to residents? Should they stay at home or what should they, I know they should reach out, but what should they do for their safety? What should they do for their safety? I would say just go along your normal day. If you see somebody that looks suspicious, call 911 and we'll be there immediately and we'll investigate that. Lieutenant, what about school choo -choo. getting out? Thanks guys, thanks Jammers, uh, thanks Flo. Just do your normal practice and we're in the area, we'll make sure we're effective and our responses. Sergeant Banas, are we missing anything here? No, that's that's all that we have at this time. So we will we'll let you know if we have any updated information to share. Okay? Hey, Tracy or Jason, do you guys have to notice, do you think, and this may be speculation, but do you have any idea if you have updated, like, outdated all the things? We've heard maybe he switched both. That's local and federal partners. That's the press conference. That's where they lead you from their Facebook page is to this Instagram thing. So let's see this. So if you look at this, right, let's go to Facebook and watch this. because It's wider. It's wider. Okay, here we go. So we're going to go through here. This is, oh, the thing was on here too. One, okay, 10,000 block of Kennerly Road, St. Louis, Missouri. Let's see if they do, because she said, do, do you have people up in the air? And he said, yeah. Well, when I looked on flight radar before I came up live, I didn't see anything over St. Louis, Missouri. Or is it Springfield? Because Springfield is way down here. That's an army chopper. See, I don't know how close. I don't know anything about St. Louis. So I don't know if St. Louis like extends out. These are all medical helicopters. What city would that be by um, those of you that are local? I'm not sure what this guy's doing. Oh, he's fixing to land. What city is that by, Gone Girl? I don't wider. I'm going to keep on running till it's wider. Let's 
Why are we streaming in 720p? I have no idea what that even means, to be honest with you. St. Louis is a city and a county? I'm waiting to see John gone, what he says. Oh, they had drones up. Hi, Phantom. What's up? You said Southeast St. Louis? <clears throat> no, you did not, Ann Pulley. <laughs> All right, they have more videos, though. Let's go watch this. This is what doesn't make sense to me, though. Like, you see this picture of him? Like, you see that picture, right? He looks thin. That one, he looks thin. And then you go here. And watch this video. It's a St. Louis County Police Department. It is a county as well. Wanted. Escape from custody suspect. 10010 Kennerly Road, Afton, Southwest Precinct, Thursday, September 21st, 2023. Tommy Boyd, 45, escaped from Missouri Department of Corrections custody on Thursday morning. Boyd was receiving medical treatment at Mercy Hospital South when he escaped. Boyd should be considered dangerous. Call 911 if you see him or have any information. Look at this shit. Look how fat he looks there. So weird. It's a weird angle. He just walked out. There's no one at the nurse's desk. <clears throat> this is bananas. This is absolutely bananas. bananas. There's no one even at the nurse's desk. It says, here is a video of Mr. Boyd leaving the hospital. He is still at large. He was last seen at 3.54 a.m. on Thursday, September 21st. That was really loud. I'm sorry. Look how fat he looks in that one. <sighs> hey, Robin. Here's another picture. Looks nothing like him, but I don't know when this is from. Because he's been in prison since the 90s. So did they like find him? Did they get a picture of him hanging out with somebody? I'm really confused. I'm confused about this whole situation. So if you think about this, he got 30 years in the 90s, right? 30 years this dude got. How is he sitting there with a COVID mask on unless this was taken at the hospital? But like somebody's holding something up. See what I mean? Like they're taking a picture. See their hand? Oh, God, Anna, I saw the school bus crash. Awful. They were going to band camp. <sighs> Horrible.
Yeah, what kind of jacket is that, Potato? Let's zoom. Let's do what we do best and zoom. Like there's some guy in the picture or something with him. He's got a COVID mask on and... You guys think that that's a guard jacket? <gasps> Yikes. <laughs> Carlin. I mean, can you imagine being his victim right now? That is so scary. Oh, this says new photo. We have an updated photo. Oh, here. We have an updated photo of Tommy Boyd, believed to have been taken this morning. He escaped from custody at 4.30 a.m. So this was taken this morning, but they're not giving any context to it. But they know where it's at. They know where that's at. Because they can tell by the neighborhood, the car, the the houses and shit. You can see a house back there. It's a kid. How can you tell? I can't tell. I can't even tell what this picture is supposed to be. Like, I don't know whose fingers those are. Like, what is that? <laughs> it doesn't even make this picture doesn't even make sense to me. What's going on here? I know I don't like it. This was this was him this morning, guys. What the heck? Yeah, he's got orange slides on. Look. He's even, oh no, are those gloves or no? Or is it one of those jackets that has like the, the thing that goes around your, that goes around your thumb? Tattoos all it looks like tattoos all over his legs, but see his hands. I think it's one of those thumb hole things. That jacket's awfully big for him, too. Be well, where did you hear that? That he was luring someone from a daycare? Where did you see that? <laughs> Jeremy spoke in class today, owns the thumb holes. That's all there is to it. I mean, there's not no one to be seen. So this guy on Instagram says, chances are if he was romantically involved with the guard or guards, he is no longer in the area. I feel like the Department of Corrections should have been at that press conference explaining I'm just going to provide a brief update on our search today for our, our escape from custody that we had here at Mercy South this morning. 
So as you guys already know, a little after 4 a.m., we did have someone escape from custody from the Department of Corrections. We have still not located him at this time. Uh, we have been concentrating our search efforts late, uh, the last several hours in the South St. Louis City area. We are working closely with, with St. Louis City Metropolitan Police Department. Missouri Highway Patrol is out here with us, as well as the U.S. Marshals. Hi, Angel. Uh, each one of those agencies has several units deployed. We have our special response unit. Missouri State Highway Patrol has had their helicopter up. We've had canines out. We've had several different units out here working on, on trying to find him and take him into custody. At this point, we would recommend to the public. We have pictures out there everywhere on social media. Next door, we have we've put them out. I know the media has helped with that, and we appreciate that. Um, I would recommend to the public, please call us. Do not approach him. We do consider him to be dangerous. Contact 911 or Crime Stoppers immediately. There is a reward associated with him being located. It's a reward. So please call Crime Stoppers or 911. Don't approach him. Again, he is considered to be dangerous. Hey, Carlin. Anything suspicious, don't hesitate to call us. There's, there's no call that's considered frivolous at this point. We want to get him in custody. You mentioned social media and photos of him. There was one that you guys had posted recently, seen most updated photo. Where is that photo coming from? So that photo was posted on social media and we believe that it was taken this morning. So social it was a recent media? photo of him. Why South St. Louis City? Do you, was there a sighting there? We've had several uh, sightings in that area. We're not 100% sure that he's in that location, but we've had enough sightings to lead us to believe that he may possibly be in that area. We have a high level of confidence, yes. Going with that social media photo, is there a way that you guys can track kind of who posted it and find out more from that? That's all part of our investigation and I'm not ready to talk about that quite yet. Does he have family living in South St. Louis City, maybe on Graboy? Um, not that we're aware of at this point, but we do have quite the investigation going on to where any family members and friends are. We still don't know how he was able to escape, do we? That would be a question for the Department of Corrections. Where are they? Updated sightings, is he still wearing the same thing as this morning, or is there an update on the clothing? The most updated clothing we have is the photo that we sent out, the selfie, the, the black clothing. Who else was in that photo with, with the suspect? There was a female, and um, we're taking care of that as part of the investigation. Does it seem like it's some person that he knows, or was it random? That's all part of the investigation, and, and maybe we can release that down the road, but not right now. There were some schools in the Tower Grove Park area that had mentioned potentially him being near campus. Is there anything you can confirm about that? Um, that I don't know uh, because that's in St. Louis City. So we have been in contact with them throughout the day. There's a St. So they Louis have been in the City? And out assisting us with the search. So we're all working jointly with this. There's a school across the street, him being a uh, convicted child sex offender. What would you say to parents and to, to make sure that you guys are doing the work? I would say, well, schools are out by now, but if you do still have a child at school, I would say you pick them up. Let's not let them walk around tonight by themselves. Keep a close eye on your kids. And, and definitely, again, if you think that you see him, call us. With uh, sundown coming up in a few hours, is this a search you guys will continue into the night? Do you need sunlight for it? What does that look like? No, we will continue searching throughout the night. This, this search is not going to stop until we locate him. Again, the, we've had several uh, sightings in the South County area, none that we have actually confirmed, So, but we do believe that he may be in that area. Do we think he's just been going by foot? Um, we've had some information that's led us to believe that he may have received some transportation. A lot of it's on foot, but again, you know, a, a lot of this is unconfirmed at this time. I'm sure you've been asked, but um, any more information on how he walked out of the hospital? That's a good question for Department of Corrections. Yeah, we just don't have that information. As in okay. transportation, like taking a bus or someone picked him up? Um, he may have received a ride from somebody, but again, that's unconfirmed. We've had a lot of tips, a lot of information come in that we're still shuffling through at this point. So You mentioned a reward. How much is that reward? Um, I don't have a dollar amount on that. That is a Crime Stoppers reward, and it would be associated with the charges against him. But I do know that I spoke with Crime Stoppers earlier today, and they are offering a reward for his capture. He's considered dangerous, right? He is absolutely considered dangerous. Do not approach him. Please call us if you see him. Is there a way you could clarify what that means by he's considered dangerous? Um, Yes, he is considered dangerous. I mean, I, again, I wouldn't approach somebody that I thought was dangerous. I, I definitely would just call 911 and let the law enforcement officials handle that. Okay, that's all that I have for tonight. Um, I will we'll let you know if we get any additional information. Follow us on Twitter. I'm just going to provide a brief update on our search today for our... Okay, it's not... Be well, I'm, I'm just saying, like, 
it's a selfie is what they said. Some kind of selfie. She said it's a selfie that someone's taking. I don't I don't see that, but I, I'm confused. I'm confused on this whole entire situation. They keep saying, oh, that's the Department of Corrections. Like, why isn't a spokesperson at least there from the Department of Corrections? No, I've heard of St. Louis, Missouri. I've just, I didn't know there was a St. Louis county and city. That's all. St. Louis ribs. What's up, Teresa? Hi, Stacy. I just don't understand this photo at all. Like, that's not a female's hands. They said it was a female. And I'm wondering either A, was he writing someone in prison? Or did he go towards his victim? Ronnie, let me show you. Let me show you. Let's watch the video again of him just walking right out. This is where he was. Northeast Correctional Center. That's that's the jail. So it was, I believe. Yeah, this doesn't make any sense. Here's the video. Oh, that's the real. Hold on. Let me get the let me get the wider one. Emily, prepare yourself for the triggering clicks of the video. Look at him hightail it. And there's not a soul in sight. That's like a nurse's station. Like, that's where the unit clerks sit. Let's watch that again. He walks out. He looks down the hall to the right, and there must be nobody in sight. Look at that. Three forty-five in the morning. There he is. <laughs> Unreal. Mercy Hospital. Oh, this is the main lobby, guys? Maybe he was coming out of a stairwell there then? It's reception. That's what you guys... Okay, that makes sense. I thought maybe that was like a... Why would they take their eyes off this guy, though? So, Kennerly Road. Let's go see... 101-00 Kennerly Road. Mercy Hospital South right here. So this would probably be the main entrance. Oh, we can't get down there, though. So let's see. Yeah, that's where he walked out of, isn't it? This front. 
section. You mean to tell me there was no security anywhere? You're housing dangerous criminals in your hospital and... Mm, I'm, there's something, there's something more to this. There's got to be. Either those guys were sleeping or this was a, they helped him. Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. Or could this be it? This is a big hospital. No, that was probably the ER. That's probably the ER, right? It seems like it would be busy in St. Louis. How does something like this happen? And get this, guys. They had 45 minutes ahead of him. He was 45 minutes ahead of them. So he went missing at 3.45 a.m. And the police didn't find out until 4.30 in the morning. Evie, that's what we all want to know. They're supposed to be, yeah, they're supposed to be handcuffed, aren't they? At the very least, I would think. Crazy. This is nuts. It's not so. So that's, that's this guy. And we'll keep our eye on it. That picture just gives me the willies. You guys think that's a kid, huh? Um... And all the helicopters I see. John Gon said there was drones earlier. Let's look at the Indianapolis escaped inmate. He's been missing. He's been on the run all week. He was at Kevin Mason. It's expanding to more cities. See, we should all know this anyways. Let's watch the video. We should all be aware of this. Because God knows where this guy is. Uh, murder suspect. Isn't that lovely? So we have a... The worst of the worst sex offender that walked out of a hospital that had two guards on him, allegedly. And now we have this guy. This murder suspect. Refresh the page. They got him. Mm -mm. Is that an old? Mm -mm. Who did they get? God, I'm, I got bit by a mosquito or something. You're talking about this sex offender, dude? Did they get him? Oh, wow. Hey, Mike Sanner. Hope you're feeling all right. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what she's talking about. Who who did they catch? Let me see. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to put this up here. And... Dude, they found him. They found him. Yes. Yes. For donuts. Okay. Tommy Boyd was located and taken into custody. See, it was good luck that we covered it. It was good luck for, for us. Um, He was taken into custody without incident. In the 7300 block of Watson Road a short time ago, St. Louis County Police Department Special Response Unit was following up on leads when they located Boyd and took him into custody. This arrest was a culmination of local, state, and federal law enforcement collaborating. Thank you to media and our community who provided numerous tips. Our residents are safer tonight with Boyd in custody. Yay, this is such good news, guys. 
Amazing, amazing. False alarm. Crystal, thank you so much. So false alarm. He is in custody. Now they need to do a press conference and they need to explain how the hell he got out of their out of their grasp in that hospital. That's what's next. So hopefully, hopefully la, la, you get an explanation, la, la, la. right? You don't hold a cap I thought you were talking about this guy was caught and oh God, I wish I wish this one would get caught, too. All right, let's watch this video. This is a murder suspect, Kevin Mason, date of birth, 10-13-1994. He is wanted for murder. This is Indianapolis, Indiana, Marion County. He was accidentally released. Hey, Tracy V, accidentally released. I mean, how does this happen? Kevin Mason, 28, was sought for more than two years in connection with a 2021 murder in Minneapolis until his arrest last week. He was mistakenly released from the adult detention center in Indianapolis on the 13th of September, two days after his arrest, due to faulty records review by civilian staff. They're outside of the Indianapolis area. And they're within other cities now. So let's see what Strahan has to say. The jail last week. Trevor Alt is tracking the latest. Good morning, Trevor. Good morning, Michael. So we're just a week removed from that gigantic manhunt for Danilo Cavalcante, who, of course, escaped by that daring crab walk sideways up the wall. But this new manhunt is for a murder suspect who simply walked out the door. As officials say, he was released by accident. Oh, whoops. Overnight, an urgent search for accused murder suspect Kevin Mason accidentally set free by authorities. He was on the run for nearly two years, and he was in custody for a short 48 hours. Investigators I'm say sorry. the 28-year-old walked Oops. out of jail on his own eight days ago, all because of a clerical error. Mason was arrested September 11th, charged in connection with a killing in June of 2021 in Minneapolis. He was finally apprehended nearly two years after the murder, but served just two days behind bars before his accidental release. And he was picked up by his girlfriend from the Marion County Adult Detention Center. His conversation to her was, I'm walking away and I will meet you. She picked him up. By the time we picked up on her, he wasn't with her. The wow. sheriff points to staffing shortages as a possible cause of the error that led to Mason's release. We're short staffed. They're underpaid. That's not an excuse, but it's a fact. And it comes in the wake of a two week manhunt that gripped the nation. We take responsibility for what happened here. We take it seriously. Uh, everybody was put in harm's way. Officials at Chester County Prison in Pennsylvania. There you go, Emily. Shout out. The killer Danilo Cavalcante broke out in August, say they've now taken significant steps to shore up their security. We we're planning to do numerous safety enhancements, most of which come with technology, personnel movement, uh, including drones, uh, detection methods. We are going to take this facility and make it state of the art. And the acting warden at Chester County Prison says they've added even more razor wire and some military grade mesh over that gap in the roof that Cavalcante climbed to, to escape. But staffing is also an issue there, too. They're operating at only about 60 percent staffing capacity. That is not good. That is not good. Oh, dear God. On a Sunday. Go. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so they got the, they have the girlfriend in custody, though. But, she, but he was no longer with her. So it says here that he obtained a new cell phone. She got him new underwear, a travel kit, and men's slippers from Walmart. Investigators covertly tracked her actions instead of going public with the search for the suspect before arresting her on Wednesday and charging her with assisting a criminal. So Desiree is still in prison in custody. But I don't think he cares. He got what he needed. He got the phone. He got his undies. He got everything that he needed to be on the run. So they're holding her, but I don't know what good she's going to be now because she probably doesn't even know where he's at, right?
But at any rate, this is a manhunt for... So the one that he's suspected of killing, the mother, Sharita Ketchings, said that it's been unbearable. She said, I, I was a very energetic individual. I'm not like that in the, anymore. Half the time, I don't even want to get out of bed. Okay, so he shot and killed Devontius Ketchings, 29 years old, in the parking lot of a Minneapolis church in June of 2021 during a funeral service. And then he was on the run for two years. They catch him. And then he gets out on a clerk error, a clerk error. So we've got two more updates, okay? So Emily, you might be interested in this one. This is, I'm so glad they caught him, by the way. Pennsylvania jail, where Danello escaped from, will spend millions to enhance security. Check this out. They will spend as much as $3.5 million to enclose outdoor exercise yards in hopes of preventing future breakouts. The Chester Jail Board unanimously approved a series of security upgrades, which include plans to cover eight outdoor exercise yards. And apparently, I need this tool, whatever this thing is, and I'm old, and it says don't piss off old people. Other improvements proposed are the installation of up to 75 more surveillance cameras around the facility and hiring eight more staff members to monitor those eyes in the sky. And then Howard Holland, the acting Chester prison warden, said that he plans to change what the inmates must wear. Prisoners should don high visibility clothing and then vary the color based on their classification levels. Ding, ding, ding. I mean, how long? Is it appropriate? I agree. How long does it take to figure something like that out? I mean, hospitals do it with scrubs. Why don't they do? I mean, really? <laughs> Chester County residents attended a town hall Wednesday night. They were still livid about the recent escapes. It's shameful that we've made national news, worldwide news, because of the bungling, said Bobby Surick. Chester County Vice Chairman Josh Maxwell, who also attended the hearing, said he understands the community's outrage. We have got to go out every single day, every single week, to try to earn this community's trust and deliver on those promises we're making. So that's the update on the Chester County or the Chester County Jail. And then we have Emily, who is our local out there. She said, we had another we had another escape. Now, this is our going out story, guys. Thousands of minks are on the run in PA. We have another escape, but this time the minks took a run for it. Thousands of minks have escaped from a Pennsylvania fur farm after holes were cut in the farm's fence over the weekend. Now 6,000 to 8,000 minks are on the loose. I say, go minks. I hope they don't catch them. I hope they don't catch them. Thousands of minks running amok in Pennsylvania wasn't on our current events bingo cards. Now experts are warning people not to approach them. Over the weekend, Pennsylvania State Police reported that holes were cut into the Richard Stahl Fur Farms fence in Rockefeller Township. I didn't even know this was legal. This incident has led to an estimated 6,000 to 8,000 minks roaming free in the Sunbury area. Do you think that they can live? Do you think they can live, like, without people? Right now, it's like living in some sort of sci-fi movie or horror film. Local resident Aaron Borinsky wrote on a Facebook post, Everywhere you look, there's minks running through the fields, standing in the roads, trying to find shelter in random houses. In a statement, Pennsylvania Game Commission Lieutenant Aaron Morrow 
said the agency was aware of the escaped minks. We are not, we are trying to tell the public is if you see a mink, give it space. Do not approach. Do not try to pick it up because of the potential of a bite or scratch or an exchange of saliva. What does the Richard Stahl Farm do? It opened in 1955 and is one of Pennsylvania's few remaining mink pelt producers. The U.S. had about 100 mink farms across 16 states as of last year. The National Nonprofit Fur Commission USA represents mink farmers. One of the family members who run the farm, Mark Stahl, is a longtime Fur Commission USA board member. Mink and pelt, fox pelts harken back to a time in fashion when fur pelts were a highly desired luxury item. In recent years, interest has dwindled due to animal activism, climate change awareness, and developments in faux fur manufacturing. Last year, the House passed a bill aiming to ban mink farming and fur production, but it was not supported by the Senate and did not become a law. The stall farm could not be reached for comment. They're out running around chasing them. Minks are carnivorous mammals, mammals, part of the family that includes weasels, otters, and ferrets. They can be black, white, or brown in color and range from 12 to 20 inches. Aw. The Pennsylvania Games Commission says they have excellent hearing, sight, and a good sense of smell. They can swim and dive and are most active at night and in the early morning. They travel at slow paces and can go for miles, also surviving cold weather. People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals present, President Ingrid Newkirk told the Daily, Daily Item that minks are naturally shy and fearful of humans. Oh. They are also considered fierce predators and opportunists, feeding on whatever they can easily find or catch. They can attack small animals, including kit- kittens and rabbits. For that reason, veterinarians are urging pet owners to keep their animals inside and monitor when they go out. Experts, including PETA and veterinarians, are encouraging locals to leave the minks alone. Regional leaders established a hotline locals can call if they spot a mink. Professional trappers or members of the public are asked to bring any caught minks to Sunbury Animal Hospital, 3920 State Road 890. Dead minks should be reported to the Pennsylvania Game Commission. Several have been caught, though exact numbers weren't available. Police also said several minks have been found deceased along a main road. Now that's awful. We just wanted to help out here, Cassie Marks told the daily item after capturing and turning in four of the minks. It's unclear who was the whole cutting culprit, but a state police report says the act is being considered agricultural criminal mischief. Multiple law enforcement agencies are investigating the holes in the fence. In the past, animal activism groups like the Animal Liber- Liberation Front have led similar mink-, mink freeing initiatives, but no direct ties to this incident have been drawn. Critics say if the motive was animal activism, it is misguided. Since the animals were raised in captivity, will not be able to become pets and can harm agritourism effort, agritourism efforts, agritourism efforts, whatever. I don't agree with fur farming at all, but I don't agree with releasing thousands of confused predators in the wild because it made them feel better. In 2017, 30 to 40,000 minks were released from a Minnesota mink pelt farm. Most ended up dead. What happens next? Um, As multiple state agencies and farm staff continue recovery efforts, experts concede that there are a lot of known unknown factors hanging in the balance. We obviously don't know where they'll go. Sunbury Animal Hospital veterinarian Beverly Shaw said she's not sure what comes next and that the area could end up with a growing mink population since it'd be impossible to catch all the thousands that got loose. The Pennsylvania Game Commission says wild minks typically mate from February to April with male minks often mating with several female minks. That's really shocking. They typically dwell in southeastern Pennsylvania along streams and lakes and wooded areas. Wow. That is unreal. And I want to give a shout out to Emily for for sending that over. (laughs) Put your... (laughs) Put your little mink paw on that like button. Aw, they're so cute. I hate hearing that they're getting run over. Emily, go catch some. (laughs) Oh, my God, jinx. (laughs) 
All right, guys. Hey, um, that wraps up our show for tonight. We will keep an eye, though. We At least the sexual predator is back in custody for now, but we got to watch the Indianapolis situation. Um, the other thing... <laughs> The other thing is tomorrow for Friday, 3 p.m., I've got Mr. Dimitri coming back. So we had a little change in the show. We're going to be we're going to be going over the latest in the Ruby Frank, Jody Hildebrandt um, documents that have been released. It's horrific. Absolutely horrific. Those children were tortured at the hands of Jody Hildebrandt in Jody Hildebrandt's house. So we're going to go over that. We're going to have Dimitri, our Unleash the Lawyer. <clears throat> segment he's gonna start joining us about once a week i think so that's really exciting make sure that you've got your questions for him and i will see you guys on friday at 3 p.m eastern standard time we're gonna be going over that and then we're gonna be sounding off on russell brand new stuff going on there too so in just a few hours it'll be friday and i will see you guys tomorrow I hope you guys have a great evening. Take care and stay safe. Let's roll those credits. Hopefully they work. Join our Facebook. Be sure to check out my other videos and playlists for more true crime content. And if that's not enough, you can join our Patreon. Don't have a tinfoil hat? It's okay. We'll make you one. It's that easy. See you guys in the next video. See you later. Bye. I don't give a damn. I don't really care. Got you in your problems. Dancing. Jennifer. Just based on my observations, her hair was very greasy. Bye, Jennifer.